Hello again, everyone. Uh, I'd like to have something uh, pretty amusing here I'd like to share with you. Um, it's an article from uh, the Washington Post. And the headline is, Pence worries North Korea will hijack the messaging around the Olympics. Uh, hijacking the messaging, uh, that's another term for uh, Pence is worried that uh, North Korea has staged a propaganda coup. And the propaganda coup was when he's sending, uh, North Korea sent um, uh, Hai and Song Wall south to look at the venues and she created all this big stir because she said very little and smiled a lot. And so South Korea, the media just couldn't get enough of her. They mobbed her everywhere she went. And um, so it seems like this is a uh, kind of angered Mike Pence because uh, Hai and uh, Song Wall has uh, stolen um, has stolen his thunder, or rather, the thunder of South Korea, and uh, so um, you know, what's he so upset about? Well, let me read you a few uh, excerpts from this ar uh, article here, and it's not very long. Um, uh, is a grave concern. Apparently, Pence has grave concern that Kim will hijack the messaging around the Olympics. Uh, the North Koreans have been master manipulators in the past, a senior White House official told reporters aboard Air Force Two on Tuesday, as the vice president arrived in the United States from a trip to the Middle East. It's a murderous state. Now, this is not, in this article, Mike Pence doesn't speak. It's this unnamed official, and it's an official who did not want to be identified as he discussed the internal discussions, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, he says, Pence plans to speak truth on the world stage, which is the opposite of what North Koreans uh, do. So this unnamed official and so on and so forth. Uh, the official said that the vice president and his staff were alarmed by news this week that South Koreans were dazzled by the arrival of Hyung Sung Wo, a singer in North Korea's all-female Rong Bong band and a rising political star in Kim's regime. Well, anybody that knows anything at all about what's going on knows that Hyung Sung Wo is not a singer in the Morong Bong Band. She's not a member of the Angels Choir. Okay, At least I haven't seen her. Uh, the official said the vice president's message to stunts on stunts like this would be something along the lines of that's nothing cute or nice. There's nothing cute or nice or touching about what this man is doing. So, uh, and in addition to ensuring the, the Olympics are not turned into two weeks of propaganda, the official said the vice president is also excited to root on our Olympians and so on and so forth. So, Mike Pence is uh, going to the Olympics to speak about, uh, to speak uh, the truth about whatever. Uh, and, you know. So, uh, this is kind of what amuses me, because it's not Mike Pence that's doing this. I doubt if Mike Pence knows very much about North Korea. I mean, he might, um, but it's not Mike Pence that's having the panic attack. It's South Korea. And so, I mean, face it, what, why should Washington, D.C. care about if, if, if North Korea sends Hai and Song Wo to South Korea. And this is not an issue that anybody really cares about. It's internal North and South Korea business. Um, this is what leads me to believe uh, that, uh, and, it, and it, it reinforces my premise, that South Korea totally controls the American foreign policy versus North Korea. 
So what happened is, is South Korea panicked because here comes Hyun Sung Woo. Everybody's excited about her, and now she's, you know, she's basically uh, burned up all the oxygen in the room. And so South Korea says, well, how do we counter this North Korea, what they call North Korean propaganda? So they call on Pence, pick up the phone and say, look, get over here during the Olympics and make a lot of noise and talk about what a wonderful thing uh, uh, you know, freedom is and, and truth and all this other stuff and tell everybody you know, what a wonderful people South Koreans are and that um, and North Korea is a terrible people. That's basically it. Um, but what, what's interesting is that, and again, I, I, I don't think Mike Pence understands a lot of what's going on there. He only, he only knows what his people tell him. And uh, in, in the case of this unnamed official who doesn't want to be named, he's quoted in the Washington Post, but he said, please don't use my name. You know, I don't like that. You know, if you if, if you're gonna if you're gonna be on on the record about something, you have to give your name. So I don't know who this guy is or woman for that matter. But here's something that's interesting, is that Mike Pence is an evangelical Christian. I mean, he's serious about his religion. This is this he is. He's a fundamentalist almost, and. Um, if there's one group of people that the North Koreans really respect, it's evangelical Christians. I know that sounds odd, but it's true. Uh, the North Koreans have always had a good relationship with evangelical Christians from the United States. Uh, mainly because they've stayed out of politics. You know, they just, they do their thing. and. Uh, an, an excellent example is uh, Billy Graham, the Reverend Billy Graham. Um, uh, here he is with uh, Kim Il-sung. And Kim Il-sung and Billy Graham were great friends. Um, if you don't know who Billy Graham is, Google him. You know, he's a big heavy hitter, uh, evangelist, uh, and a Christian evangelist. Um, I'd gone to a couple of his meetings when I was much younger. Uh, and actually, Billy Graham preached a couple sermons, and a few sermons, in North Korea. He went, I think, twice or three times in the 90s. And here's a picture of him preaching here. And, um, and he's in a North Korean church here preaching. And notice that the pictures of uh, Kim Il-sung and uh, Kim Jong-il are on the walls of the church up over uh, Billy Graham's head there. So um, even in the church, they put the pictures of the, of the Generalissimos. Um, and yeah, the church, this is a Chugol church in Pyongyang, and uh, yeah, that's a cross on top of it there. Um, <laughs> they, they put the cross on their churches. A funny story, I, I don't know whether it's a Chugol or one of the churches, but uh, the North Koreans had just built the church. It was newly built. I think it was the other Bongsu or whatever the name of it is. And they just built this church and they invited a bunch of evangelical Christians to come and dedicate the church. So the Christians all show up in North Korea to dedicate this new church. And one of them noticed, wait a minute, you haven't got a cross on the top. What happened to the cross? And the North Korean says, oops, our bad. And they put a cross on the top of it. <laughs> so, uh, and here's a picture of uh, Billy Graham uh, presenting a Bible to uh, Kim Il-sung. And so, and Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham, went over two or three times or whatever to North Korea, and he held church services in their churches there. Um, and, and he preached like his father did. And um, Jimmy Carter, President uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, ex-president at the time, he went to uh, North Korea, and Jimmy Carter again was an evangelical Christian. Still is, he's still alive. and. Uh, Kim Il-sung had a lot of respect for Jimmy Carter. One reason is Jimmy Carter used to like to brag he never had any kind of wars during his presidency, during his four years. I mean, that's, you know, no stupid wars. But, um, you know, it, when it comes right down to it, uh, uh, that's an opening that uh, people can, can exploit towards North Korea. And Pence, being a, an evangelical Christian, 
you know, he should stop and say, wait a minute, I'm not going to allow myself to go to South Korea and be a mouthpiece for their government. You know, I shouldn't be roped in to go into South Korea and blabbing off about this and that. Instead, he should follow in the footsteps of Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, Jimmy Carter. Show up in North Korea and say, look, I'm an evangelical Christian. God loves you. I'm here. Let's make friends. And uh, Kim Jong-un uh, emulates his grandfather a lot. He, uh, he admired his grandfather. He loved his grandfather. And so he tries to do, he tries to look to his grandfather as an example of how he should run things. And because his grandfather, uh, Kim Il-sung, was friends with evangelical Christians, there's no reason at all why, why Kim Jong-un wouldn't be as well under the right circumstances. For somebody to go there and say, and, and, uh, and to be fair, uh, 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 Reverend Graham, or Billy Graham and Franklin Graham and Jimmy Carter had charitable endeavors in North Korea. Uh, they just didn't show up and start preaching. They had a lot of good works they did, and which is much appreciated by North Koreans. Uh, evangelical Christians have that, uh, that university, uh, the, the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology. They built that from total just donations. And it's a huge thing. It's totally staffed by evangelical Christian faculty. They're not allowed to proselytize, but again, they got this big university there, and uh, it's, it's, um, it does a very good job of educating um, uh, North Korean uh, young people in the sciences. So, so anyway, I was just, I thought that was interesting that, uh, that Pence appears to be just totally frightened of, uh, of uh, Hyang Song uh, Wool. And the uh, South Koreans summoned him, said, here, come here, you know, um, put in a good word for us. So anyway, uh, I just thought I'd share that with you. It's kind of interesting and um, we'll see what happens. We'll keep our eyes peeled. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh